Monday and welcome to our unboxing, dismantling, and possible upgrade, hard drive, memory, that type of thing, of our new Dell Inspiron 15 5000, specifically the 5502. This machine has 8 gig of RAM, it's got a quarter terabyte drive, but it's an M2 drive, PCIe, NVMe, so it's the super fast drive. It has Wi-Fi 6, it has 15.6 inch display, uh, with the higher resolution being the full HD 1920 by 1080. It's only 3.8 pounds, which is great for a 15 inch laptop, which is 1.7 kilograms for those of you who like kilograms. We're going to take a look at this right now and uh, unbox it and let, well, let's just get to it rather than talk about it. So there's the box. There's nothing exciting at all about the box. Um, all right, let's get to, to opening this up. I always like to keep the boxes clean so I can return them if there's a problem. So I try to always cut the plastic nicely. You don't have to, you can just tear it apart. Also, uh, when I resell the products, which I typically only keep laptops six months to a year, um, people like to have the boxes. Still with the unimportant stuff first. So typical AC adapter, it's going to have a North American plug. Yeah, there you go, because of course that's where I am. Let's just tear that open. Yeah, typical North American plug, nothing interesting there. As far as the laptop goes, lovely packaging. And uh, let's see what else, okay, there's nothing else in this box except this little document. So I'm gonna get rid of this box, and flip this laptop over, and oh my goodness, the warranty and safety regulatory information, how exciting. So I'm certainly gonna read that, not. Okay, so, uh, very light battery is not removable uh, well not readily removable you have to pop out these screws which we're going to do yeah definitely metal top backlight keyboard and uh, giant screen but very very light it's also rocking the uh, Intel i5 in particular the 11th gen i5 specifically the 1135G7, which is uh, a 4.2 gigahertz uh, CPU. But more importantly, it comes with the Iris XE graphics. And you think, built-in graphics, dude? That's gonna suck. Uh, well, built-in graphics are seldom as good as discrete graphics controllers, but this one with the XE has a huge jump in performance over its predecessors. You can actually play modern games on this with decent frame rates. Intel Iris XD graphics can give you up to double the performance over our previous generation in the same power envelope, which is super important for portable battery powered PCs. So performance is way up and we're now getting frame rates and image render times that rival discrete GPUs for thin and light laptops. The Iris XD engine is packed with more shading resources than ever. And those shading resources, which we call execution units or EUs, allow us to apply all the visual effects that developers use to make their games look amazing. Where the 10th gen design had 64 EUs, Iris XD Graphics in 11th gen packs 96 execution units. In the case of Iris XE, the GPU runs it up to 1.35 GHz. That's an almost 23% speed up compared to the previous generation. Data compression is also applied to Iris XE's media and display blocks too. Encode and decode throughput are up to two times higher than what they were in the previous generation. Iris XE is also the first mobile GPU from any vendor with hardware accelerated AV1 decode. Now, if you haven't heard of AV1, it's the hottest thing in video compression right now. Now, decoding AV1 video is really processing intensive and specialized hardware on Iris XE handles most of the job without breaking a sweat. And since YouTube, Vimeo, Netflix, are all in the early stages of rolling out AV1 encoded video, offloading that decode to Iris XE is going to stretch out your battery life while you're binging on your favorite new TV series. Iris XE's improved display engine offers a ton of options for attaching to monitors on your desktop or to a television in your living room. The GPU can drive up to four 4K screens and it even has the bandwidth to power 8K displays at 60 Hz. Iris XE is also the first GPU industry-wide to accelerate Dolby Vision in hardware. Now, Netflix has a good number of shows and movies available in Dolby Vision, and I get pretty excited when those pop up because they look great. Together, 
Our software stack and hardware engine deliver playable frame rates in games that simply weren't accessible on thin and light laptops before. We're talking about AAA titles, and for multiplayer games where every frame matters, we're averaging more than 100 frames per second at 1920 by 1080. That's full HD, and in some cases, even twice the frame rates. The spec on it is that uh, this is 0.56, so half an inch. And uh, when you include, because this is beveled, uh, when you include the, uh, the thickness of the back, it's 0.7 inches. So it's very thin, it's, it's incredibly light. It's a little bit heavier than the Surface Book, but uh, not enough that I would care, and especially given the, uh, the giant uh, amount of screen space, the additional screen space, and the number pad, well worth it. So they put this cool sort of rubberized plastic hinge on the back, and what that does is, we'll just show you, uh, it lifts up the machine, so, bloop, which makes it a little nicer. I wish I could fold this all the way over though. I do like using the tablet features. Uh, that come with Surface Books and that type of device. It also has a fingerprint scanner to sign in. And unfortunately, the camera is not the infrared camera. You cannot use it for Windows, Windows Hello sign-in. Now here is a very, very interesting design choice that I think is gonna make an enormous difference on this machine. Take a look at this, see those? You think, well, it's just little holes in it for, for cooling, well, for venting. No, they're not vents, they're the, well, they are vents, but they're the intake vents. So what that means is you can put this on your lap and not have all of the lint and crap from your jeans or your house coat or whatever else you're wearing get sucked in because it's up on top here. And on the back, the this is simply an exhaust vent. That's for the speakers, by the way, in case you're wondering what those holes are for. Super smart design. All right, let's get to uh, pulling this thing apart. I will speed this up so you don't have to sit here and watch me pull out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws. Not one in the middle, which is a bit odd, but fine with me. Ooh, these are some tiny, tiny screws, so I'm gonna have to get out my specialized tools. My regular small tools are not going to work well on this, and I don't wanna strip these. So these two screws don't wanna come out. Uh, and uh, that might be because they have washers on them, uh, behind them. So I'm gonna leave that. It also might be because uh, a quick look around the edge here shows that this laptop has no obvious pry points. And a pry point is the place where you're supposed to separate materials. So in this case, what I wanna do is pull this back off. And uh, what I would normally do is just use a pry tool, but I'm gonna assume you don't have one. So if you don't have a pry tool, what do you use? I just use a credit card. So, um, what I think is what I think is going to be the best solution here is to try to lift this up at this back corner, yeah, and then jam a credit card along the edge here. So let's see if I can do that. Okay, that doesn't want to come up with a credit card, which is a bit unusual. I don't think I've ever had that before where I can't pry it off. So what I'm going to do is something you probably want to be careful doing, which is to use metal. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use a very small flat head screwdriver and I'm just going to try to pry back here where the hinge is to see if I can get this up. There we go. Do you see that? That just popped. See? And I applied almost no pressure. All I did is pull it back like that and boom, it popped up. Now, what I could do is just use my credit card and run it around uh, the outside. That's the normal thing, but I don't have to. I can just pull this off. Let's go pull this thing apart. So just run your finger along. Never force anything. Uh, but you sometimes do have to apply some pressure. So don't be afraid to uh, put a little bit into it, but if you're putting a lot, you've missed a screw. All right, so there we go. And yes, this screw has a washer and this screw has a washer. So these two at the back, yeah, they're not gonna come out. So see what I mean about not applying too much? You just gotta be careful. Okay, so heat shields, a whole lot of manufacturing stickers explaining what, part, what parts they are. You can see this was assembled. January 15th, 2021. All right, now let's go over all of the high level stuff and then we're gonna dig into some detail on here that you might not be aware of. So first thing, speakers, there and there. They just pop up, by the way, you can pull them out, it's not a problem. Secondly, battery. Battery, there's some cool stuff we're gonna explain in just a moment. Memory is here and all you do is flip this up. This is not uh, glued down. You can see here that in this case, on mine, 
I have an extra memory slot, which is excellent. That is, I have an extra unused memory slot, right? Which means I can double a memory. This one shipped with eight gig. Uh, I could double it to 16, and uh, that would be really nice that I don't have to toss out the original memory that it, that it came with. I'd like to interject for just 10 seconds and ask you to click like if you found this video useful. Our site is dedicated to explaining technology in simple ways and providing cookbook answers for technical problems. We spend a lot of time on Windows 10 and Windows Server. We spend a lot of time on Azure, Office 365, but mostly our products are about how-tos. Lots and lots of cookbooks like how to uninstall something when it's stuck. If you would click subscribe, we would greatly appreciate it. It really helps us with the Google algorithm. Thanks for your help and back to the show. Uh, this is a heat pipe that goes off to the CPU uh, fan. This is your Wi-Fi card. You can see the antennas coming off of it. One of them will go into the um, uh, behind the keyboard. The other will go up into the screen. Uh, that's what's giving you Wi-Fi 6. That is the SSD. We're going to get back into that in just a moment. So that's your solid state uh, M.2 PCIe NVMe uh, hard drive. That is the uh, battery, that uh, the BIOS battery that keeps all of the hardware settings when you power down. It's a standard uh, CR2032, uh, which it's nicely labeled as. Uh, it's quite unusual to see them labeled, so that's nice. Okay, so let's get into the uh, some of the details here because there is some really cool stuff in here. The first thing is this battery uh, has three lithium ion packs in it. Uh, in the in the in the base unit here um, and there's this fourth one over here now this laptop does have depending on the country you're in a three cell option which is about 40 uh, watt hours this is 53 people often ask well is a four cell better than three cell well yes but only because more cells usually and I emphasize that word usually mean more electricity storage but you could have smaller cells. It is quite possible to have, I mean, cells don't have to be uh, this size. So basically you have to check the number if you're really freaked out about it. The only disadvantage to a larger battery is the weight, but these batteries are so thin and light, uh, it's nothing much to worry about. Something you may notice here is uh, there's a slot here of some sort that isn't being uh, used. And you look at that, and you, M2, ah, it's an M.2 drive here, great. There's a second hard drive slot in here, which is right there. Uh, so that is your second M.2 slot, which is awesome. It's uh, cleverly labeled right there, SSD2. Now, something with SSD1 that you should take note of is that uh, if you remove this screw, uh, you can then slide the bracket out and mount it here instead. And then you can put in a standard 2280. This is a uh, 2230. In case you don't know what uh, that means, 22 mill millimeters wide, by uh, 30, and you can flip this around and get a 2240 if you want, but most people will buy 2280s, which are the longer ones. Now, the size, the physical size of the drive doesn't make any difference. Uh, what you're looking for is the capacity and then the speed and so on and so forth. So normally what I do is I take these drives and I, I toss them or sell them or do whatever else. In this case though, I don't have to do that because I would just use the second slot. Uh, why would I waste this? Take a bath on it on the resale when I could just pop a second one in. Normally, I have to toss the memory out in these uh, ultra-thin laptops and replace it with new memory, but I don't have to in this case because of that additional slot, which is just the best. All right, so at this point, I'm not going to change any of these components because I really don't need to, but if I did want to swap the battery out for some reason, say it's five years later and the battery's dead, it's only one, two, three, four, five screws to pull it out, and uh, the header just pulls off and easy peasy change. Okay, before we put the back on, let's uh, go around the uh, ports and show what uh, this unit has. So this has an SSD slot, so you can pop your camera or your cell phone uh, memory in and you're on your way. Super speed, so it's super speed USB uh, 3. So that is uh, the old school connector, a headphone jack, nothing along the back. Uh, power, HDMI, and that's HDMI 1.4, by the way, which is the nice standard. In theory, I think you can now run off of this laptop, I think it's spec to run two 8K external monitors or three 4K monitors off of that, which, you know, pretty good. <laughs> uh, another USB 3.1 type A connector. In other words, the old slot, but it's super speed. Uh, and then a single USB type C that also will drive DisplayPort. All right, so what I'm going to do is 
put this back on and I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to sit here and watch. So I'm going to power it up. Okay, so it's already pulled out my background, which is lovely, uh, but you don't care. Just in case you're looking at going, Why, what's that from? That's from the little town that I live in called Chestermere, Alberta, just east of Calgary. Okay, so the first thing you need to do when running a benchmark is patch the machine. Uh, because it's really the only fair thing to do. So I'm going to go to update and I'm going to check for updates and pull down whatever's there. I'm also going to go to apps and features right now and I'm going to uninstall anything like Alexa that is just added garbage. So specifically I'm looking for McAfee and of course the Dropbox promotion. You know anything that's running in the background while of course that isn't going to make much difference to Dropbox. It isn't helping. McAfee I absolutely want gone. And this is where it tries to confuse you. You can't just click continue here. You have to click this and then this. And it's just in the here. Oh, here's the big scare warning. Go away, McAfee. Yeah, they just make it difficult to even uninstall it and try to scare regular consumers. McAfee, McAfee still uninstalling. It doesn't even uninstall fast. Like I said, I know lots of people have their opinions about antivirus. I have a huge amount of experience running different antivirus programs corporately and personally and the McAfee retail product is one that I personally will not touch and I would recommend that you remove it immediately if you really want to use a third-party tool use something else don't use Norton and don't use McAfee both by the way are great corporate products terrible retail products in my humble opinion again so now that we've got the unit up, I can hear that the fan is still running, which means the CPU is still spinning around. So what we need to do is give it a few minutes to finish off what it's doing. And uh, what I'm going to do in the interim is download NovaBench, which is my favorite tool for doing these little benchmarks. By the way, no, NovaBench does not pay me anything. Okay, I'm going to call that and I'm going to close this. That will actually help as well. Let's click start test. Now I'm going to run through this three times. I will stop after the first one and show you the numbers and then I will run it two more times quickly so you don't, I'll, you know, speed it up so you don't have to sit here and watch and get away. Okay, those are some pretty good scores. So let's see what we get here. 983 for the CPU, 123 for the GPU, RAM's okay. Disk is a bit slow on the right, but uh, nice and fast on the read. Uh, let's run this again. All right, so what we've got here is an average score. I'm just gonna call that score a thousand. Let's just go with that. Let's go with the middle benchmark here on principle. And what we've got is, there's the numbers right there. So the RAM's coming in at 193, which is fine. The drive's a little bit faster here on the uh, uh, other, on the future test, so it's slower back then. <laughs> yeah, the write speed's actually pretty terrible on this, but the read speed, which is what you care about mostly, is excellent. I'm pretty happy with it. I'll put up a chart here so we can compare this to other devices that I've benchmarked in the past. Other Latitudes and I should say other Dell products like Latitudes and some other Inspirons I think are in here as well. It would be really helpful if you would click like at the bottom uh, and if you like this type of thing if you'd click subscribe. It very much helps with the Google algorithm. And you can always leave your comments at the bottom. We will get back to you there. Uh, also, you can always get a hold of us at www.urtech.ca. Thanks and have a great day.